Heidi Sieberm from PlanRadar. I'm happy to be here at Recotech 2020. I think it's a great idea to bring real estate construction and tech together. Uh, so thank you again also to the organizers of this uh, great event. Um, I would like to take you uh, through the first steps of digitization since everybody talks about digitization in that industries and everybody asks uh, himself uh, or herself, how can we start? And um, I would like to just give you some idea of how easy a start could look like. Construction real estate projects often start very positive. Uh, you see smiling faces, you see uh, politicians all over the world uh, kicking off projects. Very positive thing to build uh, or start building something new. Um, but then very often problems and challenges appear. Uh, as we see also in other industries, there's a lack of skilled workers, um, lack of communication wherever people are working together. Uh, communication is key. Uh, for the project success. Delays and overspending, change of scope. I mean, construction project, uh, of course, uh, it can happen uh, within the years of uh, the construction phase that uh, new regulations appear. It can happen that uh, the investor, the, the, the client changes the opinion, wants to have something different. That's a normal process that needs to be handled. A lot of documents and forms, uh, since a lot of money is involved, uh, everything should be documented um, and uh, trackable within that project. So. And uh, a lot of regulations, of course, uh, since uh, a lot of people are involved, a lot of money, uh, a lot of regulations are there in that project. And by the way, this picture was taken in Berlin. Um, it's part of the documentation uh, from the big failed Berlin airport project that recently was finished after years and after uh, a lot of over budget. And uh, it's not unusual that that blame game uh, starts and, and people see each other again in front of, uh, of court. We can see those examples all over the world, like every big city has uh, its own example of a failed project just to uh, cover some of them here in Europe. Uh, in the UK, the Tottenham Stadium, for example, in uh, uh, Germany, the Elbphilharmonie, uh, a great project, a great site, but uh, a lot of uh, uh, delay and overspending that happened. Uh, as mentioned, the Berlin airport, but also here in the Nordics, we have the uh, nuclear power plant here in Finland um, that uh, was also a big, a big uh, construction uh, failed project. So having a look uh, on those projects uh, or the problems that appear in such a project again, um, we can see uh, that those projects are not so different that, uh, from what we see in other industries. Uh, lack of skilled workers, okay, we have that in other industries as well. Lack of communication, again, wherever people are uh, uh, talking and working uh, with each other, uh, that's happening. Uh, delays and overspending, change of scope, so no, no big difference to other industries, again. Uh, documents and form regulations. Let's uh, have a look at the pharmaceutical industries and their regulations, for example. So again, it's nothing that is new. Um, uh, but what is different in construction? We try to deep dive a little bit and, and try to find the reasons. And we think that one of the reasons is that construction is really lacking in digitization. That study or that chart was done uh, by McKinsey some years ago, but uh, the current state is not very different. So as we can see, uh, there's a ranking of the uh, most to the least digitized industries. And we see that ICT obviously is number one. Uh, and uh, one of the, uh, the least digitized industries is construction. Um, only agriculture and hunting is behind construction. But I think uh, even in the meantime, they are, uh, they are, they are better than construction. Uh, Let's have a look at the, at the opportunity in terms of productivity. What does it mean for a whole industry where a lot of money and a lot of people are, a lot of money is in and a lot of people are working? Um, there's a big gap that uh, we could close with uh, or being part of the productivity growth, uh, helping with digitization. Um, while other industries started the journey of digitization all, uh, already in the late 90s, like uh, manufacturing, um, they're much better now than, than, than here in construct than we are in construction. So uh, I think everybody now 
analyzing that that current state wants to 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 know where to start and i think uh when 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 uh, asking that question we should deep dive again into that industry and get a better feeling of where we are at the moment so let's go back to when digitization actually started in construction real estate it was i think with the architects when they started to uh, draw their plans uh, not pen and paper based but uh, started to use cad tools cad software and then people ask themselves okay those files that architects are generated that would be great to have them stored in a central place um, and then uh, dms document management systems uh, or uh, uh, plan uh, versioning uh, tools came uh, came up and uh, people started to store that plans accessible uh, and versioned to all the stakeholders in one central place that's on the left uh, uh, down cor bot bottom corner on the top right corner we can see where digitization could be in the in that industry and i think there are a lot of great startups out there that uh, really try to to leverage ideas uh, and and present ideas to that industry uh, we're talking about AI, we're talking about IoT, uh, I don't know, uh, sensors that are being placed in, in concrete to get data from the stability of the concrete uh, throughout the construction phase. Great ideas, um, uh, big data, like in any, any other industry, and um, industry-wide benchmarking, taking that big data. But are we there at the moment? Are we there at the moment? I think no. So part of uh, that journey should be to standardize uh, the data across the industry and uh, the standardization in, uh, of, of that data in our industry in real estate and construction is BIM. But when we have a look at the current state of uh, BIM in our industries, uh, real estate and construction, uh, we, I think, know that uh, even, even in, in, the, in the leading countries of BIM in Europe, uh, obviously the Nordics and, and, and the UK, um, uh, I think there aren't more than 10 to 12 projects all over Europe that were really, really done from A to Z uh, using BIM. So we think uh, that that is the, that is the way um, that we need to take to standardize data across the industry. But uh, in, in order to, able, to be able to standardize industry, we need to take a step before that um, to start collaborating based on data that we collect all over our projects. So our solution, our approach uh, with PlanRadar is that we are providing a cloud-based, easy-to-use uh, piece of very well-crafted technology that enables collaboration across the whole uh, life cycle of a real estate project. As you can see here on the right, there is a web app, then there are mobile apps that are available for all the devices to have really everybody um, on the construction site on board. It's quite easy for uh, everybody to just upload with a drag and drop your blueprint or uh, take it from the, the, the document management system that you have in place already or might have in place already uh, or even a BIM model if you are already uh, ready with BIM and um, upload that to a plan reader and part of that layer you can start collaborating um, documenting uh, managing your tasks managing your reports your defects on a push of a button and I think very important uh, for, for adoption of such kind of system uh, like PlanRadar is that uh, onboarding really needs to be easy um, and, and fast. So no one on the construction site has time to learn a new software. Nobody, uh, uh, since many projects are, as we know, delayed and have a big overspend, there are other priorities than learning a, a new software. So our approach is to make it really easy and um, we constantly ask uh, our, our user base, our clients, how, uh, how they perceive the value of the software and they report savings uh, above about seven hours per work week just by having everybody in the same place, having one platform for all the stakeholders. So PlanRadar can be used uh, across the whole or along the whole uh, life cycle of real estate from the planning phase where architects and engineers are being part of uh, to the construction phase where construction companies, project developers, 
are uh, taking over and, and developing, the, developing the real estate. Um, and uh, then once uh, the, that uh, construction is finished, then usually um, the, the owners or the investors, the asset and property and facility managers take over to maintain the building. And um, having that data for the whole life cycle in one place is, of course, beneficial for all the parties. Just to give you a small idea of how that looks like, um, in the planning phase, you can collaborate, uh, for example, on the, on the, on the plan uh, uh, itself. Uh, you can uh, set uh, or put uh, these pins uh, or tickets, as we call them. You can configure them and customize them according to your needs, according to your local regu uh, regulations. You can, uh, in the construction phase, the big focus on easy communication and uh, tracking of data. And uh, in, the, in the operation phase where uh, reporting is important to know uh, where is the, 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 what is the status of the real estate, uh, for example, also in the due diligence process, for example, uh, it's uh, super easy. It can be done, all of that in, on a push of a button. And we're really happy that we could convince more than 8,000 clients uh, all over the world uh, from more than 45 countries to, to use PlanRadar in the projects. So uh, there are the Siemens, the CBREs, the Cashman Wakefields, uh, the Bosch uh, of the world, the Strabag of the world that, uh, that like what we do and that really uh, motivates us and pushes us to even uh, go beyond that, that level. And um, yeah, uh, every month more than 12,000 new companies uh, want to start a free trial uh, that is available on the website and just try it out if it works with their, uh, with their project as well. Some of the projects I brought over with me today is, uh, uh, so it's the good thing with PlanRadar, it's not only usable uh, across the whole uh, real estate lifecycle, but also can be used in any kind of project. So it's not limited to a uh, residential or commercial or other type of projects, industrial projects. So that, for example, uh, here we have uh, we see a commercial project in um, an office building in, in Germany. And here, for example, also the underground construction where um, many times you don't have uh, service or you need to work in an offline mode. Uh, also there uh, it could be used. Here that was the underground construction in Vienna. But also for projects uh, like a hotel project in Poric in Croatia, uh, a hotel project uh, that was completed with uh, Plan Radar. Yeah, and uh, that's it from my side. I really want to thank you. Uh, I want to highlight again that we are now here in the Nordics uh, with an own office in, in Stockholm, in Sweden. Yeah, I want to thank you and uh, wish you to be uh, successful in your, in your agendas for digitization. And uh, I'm happy, and Plan Radar is happy to be part of your journey. And yeah, just uh, try it out with Plan Reader. Thank you.